Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Restricted, Asia Wolf, and Fear No Equal. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. This is the second encounter, escaping the cosmic frogs and the extraplanar prison. So if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand, Asia Wolf. 62 out of 62, Wand of the War Mage in my hand, along with my spell book. Three first level, three second level, three third level, three fourth level, two fifth level. Blind Oracle. Short bow plus one in hand, no spells to speak of, no short rest abilities to speak of. 73 out of 73 hit points. Restricted. 83 of 83 hit points, plus one shield in offhand, four level one spells, two level two spells, three level three spells, three level four spells, and two level five spells. I also have all of my channel divinities. And fear no equal. 64 out of 94 hit points, great axe plus one in hand. I have action surge and indomitable both available. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. In this encounter, they're going to fight against one gray Chaos Toad. The gray Chaos Toads have the resistances that the Chaos Toad of Death had. They shape change, they have magic resistance, they have magic weapons, they can regenerate, they bite, they claw, they have great swords. The difference is they don't do necrotic damage like the Death Toad did. Accompanying this Chaos Toad is a pair of cult fanatics. These are cults of chaos. No trademark there, hopefully. I'm certain nobody has ever trademarked Cultist of Chaos. They have a variety of spells. They have Command, Inflict Wound, Shield of Faith, Hold Person, Spiritual Weapon. That's what they've got. Terrain and Effects. The adventurers have made their way out onto the air docks of the prison. If you fall off the dock, you're going to be stuck in the same way that you were stuck last time. It's essentially zero movement unless you have some sort of fly speed or some other way to travel without your feet touching the ground. So that's any of the orange area. If the orange area also has some girders or planks or something like that, you can try to balance on those with a DC 15 acrobatics check. And if you fail those checks, then you're going to fall off. There's a couple of pieces of difficult terrain. You can walk around on those. Then in the middle here, there's a giant fan that's keeping the thing in position. If you fall into the giant fan, you're going to take 4d6 slashing damage, I suppose, for a fan as you get chewed up by the fan blades and then spit back out. So any questions about terrain? Are the barrels tall enough to hide behind? Absolutely. How tall are the walls? They're half cover height. So they're going to at least limitedly prevent us from falling off. No, they, they don't impede movement at all. Doesn't matter which side we go, you can get knocked off of things one way or the other. But if you want to hide behind the low walls, then you're welcome to do so. Tactics, what do you guys think for fighting a single Chaos Toad supported by two friends? If they group up, I can either get close and use Spirit Guardians, or the Wizard can always go with Trusty Fireball. I mean, we want to open with Trusty Fireball if possible anyway. Yeah, usually. I think in this case it's probably worth it because it'll lower those cultists to where we can knock them out very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Instead of our usual knock out the single target, let's try and chip them all and then knock off the little guys as fast as we can. It feels like it's supposed to be a choke fight, but as we love, we've got two different passages here. Doesn't matter which side we take. Fireball if possible and then let them come to us and take them the same old way. Yeah, uh, coming to us might be problematic depending on how spell-happy Chaos Cultists are, though. Those spells can be kind of annoying at times. Any other thoughts? In this case, let's throw it down. Go ahead and roll initiative. Okay. Maybe. Anybody have higher than 20? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you got? The rogue has a 25. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 18 here. 16 on the wizard. Anybody have between a 15 and a 10? 12 on the owl. Anybody have between a 10 and a 5? I have an 8 for the Chaos Frog and Co. What do you got for me, fighter? My initiative dice are back. I have a 3. <laughs> ah, yes. All right, Rogue, start us off. I would like to go behind the first set of barrels. Hide bonus action. 33. Mm -hmm. Then we'd like to take a shot at the northmost cultist. Okay. Because I think that's the one I can see. Unless I can see... You can see all of them. They're just all going to have cover. We'll shoot the toad. 28 to hit. 28 hits. For 28 points of damage. That is my turn. After that, we're going to go to the cleric. Let's see here. The cleric will move four to the right. And let's go one up. And we'll cast another spiritual weapon on the gray toad. We'll put it to his uh, lower left. That is a 20 to hit. 20 hits. 13 force damage. And action to dodge and end turn. 
after the cleric is the wizard. I would like to move to that southeast square of the cleric there, please. What a fireball on the group there, hitting as many as possible. DC 17 deck save, 33 plus the 5, so 38. Fail, fail. And then this guy has magic resistance, so he's going to fail as well. Chaos Cultists are going to drop immediately. Chaos Toad is going to take 19 because it resists fire. What's next? Or is that it? That's it. I guess I didn't need to move here because I was moving for Counterspell. After that, we're going to go to the Owl. Cannot get to that target, so let's move him to that barrel north of me. Behind it? Yep. After that, we're going to go to the Frog. Frog regenerates on its turn. Frog is going to... Ooh! Nice move. Behind cover and in melee range with a squishy. Excellent choice. After that, we're going to go to the fighter. Charge up to the north of the rogue, and we are going to attack with our great axe. That is going to miss. That's a 13 to hit. Indeed, it will. Try again. That is a 25 to hit. Yep. For 13 damage. All set. Action surge. You got more. 21 to hit. Yep. Reroll the damage. 15 damage. Last attack. That's a crit. Apologies, I dropped my other die and had to go fetch it. So that is a total of 22 on the crit. After that, we're going to go to the rogue. Is it worth it for me to try and stab this thing, or should I just disengage? Let's just disengage and be safe. Yeah, you've got the sneak attack anyway. Yeah. Bonus action disengage. Behind the barrels? Behind the cleric. And we will go ahead and shoot the toad from there. 24 to hit. 24 will connect. That's good damage. 33 points of damage. 33 is lethal. Yay. Nice. Short rest, report hit points remaining. 73 of 73. 83 of 83. 62 of 62. 64 of 94. Anybody can spend any hit dice. I can use them sequentially, right? Yes. You can roll it, read it, and then decide if you want to roll more. 2 for 17, going to use 2 more. And 2 for 15 puts me at 94 of 94. Used 4 of 10. Any post-rest actions? Not it. The adventurers steal themselves onto a ship and make their way out to the various moats that are floating around the Chaos Plane looking for seals that will get them out of here. Two encounters down, four more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarsen Zero, and I will see you next time.